Hey everybody, Johnny Engen here, um, doing my inquiry project. And uh, what interested me is what I, assessment content relevance. So I'm going to talk to you about um, what drives engagement, what is the content of our assessments made up of, do kids care, and is it relevant to their lives? Can we, make, can we make mathematics relevant to their lives? What drives engagement? I mean, I was looking at some of our assessments, our old ones, and I was thinking to myself, wow, you know, We've talked so much about, we've learned all these techniques in this class of like questioning and getting kids engaged. And it got me thinking more about, well, what is the content of the stuff on the assessments? Is it even actually engaging? Um, so material and content that is relevant to students' lives. And we talked to, uh, in last class, about culturally responsive teaching by Hammond, and they mentioned uh, information processing. And the, important to, the importance of providing culturally relevant material and examples from students' everyday lives. The bottom line is if we want students to learn and be engaged, then the material should be that way, right? It should be aimed at, at them. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some examples from some assessments that are current in my school. And then I'm gonna provide you with some alternatives. This is an actual question talking about unit rate and some ratios and um yeah so at best buy steve can buy four dvds for 48 dollars at target steve can buy six dvds for 90 dollars so part of it's cut out i think which which is a better deal per dvd right so you want to find the unit rate see which one is a better deal so i asked my kids in class how many of these kids have dvds or are interested in them or buy them at the store and I had one kid one hour, zero kids another hour, and two kids another hour. And the two kids said that they just swing by like the big barrels that, that are like, you know, five for three dollars or whatever. But there was very little interest uh, in these kids. And of course, everyone else is like Netflix and blah, and we watch this and we go through this. Um, you know, you get everything online, right, on cable or on demand. And so I thought to myself, uh, as much as like I love Rocky Four. And I tell all the kids, you should really see Rocky Four. It's a great movie. Um, you know, they're probably not going to go buy the DVD, they're, right? They're going to say, say Rocky Four into a device. It's going to pop up probably for free, for sure. And they're going to watch it that way. So, you know, this kind of content isn't relevant to their lives because they don't buy DVDs. So instead, now Call of Duty is, you know, there's some questionable questionable, uh, I guess, appropriateness, depending on the age, but I'm just coming at a perspective of things that I know kids play. Call of Duty video game allows players to purchase points. I've learned this. There's two options. Option one is to spend $20 for 2,800 points, while option two is to spend $10 for 1,000 points. We could ask this question on an exam, on a test, on a summative assessment, we could also include this in the units, right? So kids are engaged. And some of my quietest kids, um, you know, when you talk about what they're interested in, they really come out of their shells. So if the if the content um, that we're doing in math is something that they do, and a lot of kids play video games, maybe not necessarily this one. And I have a picture of a Nintendo here because now this makes me feel old, but that's what, you know, I played back in the day, Mike Tyson's punch out and things like that. So, um, but this is real life stuff. It's real. This, these are real options and kids would be engaged. And then they could also be thinking about, well, hey, if I spend this much money on this game, I should probably be caring about which one is a better deal. Am I just going to get points one time or am I going to get points multiple times? Um, they can express these as ratios in simplest form. They're going to care about labeling the money and the points as a ratio because this is something that's relevant to their life. Another one. Here's another example 
uh, a current math question on a math assessment at Cottage Grove Middle School. It was a recipe for lemonade, right? And this is this is great. And may, and some don't get me wrong, like food is a great topic for sure. But I don't I don't think and I don't know any kid who's ever been concerned about how sweet the recipe is of lemonade and what the sugar content is when you're 12. I haven't met a kid yet. I've been on this planet 41 years and teaching for 15 years. I haven't seen a single kid care about this, right? Maybe, maybe we, you know, could tie in Rocky Four with this, and we could stress making the lemonade and then buying the Rocky movie. I don't know, but anyways, um, this is a big time problem on one of our assessments, and you know, I don't, I don't think it's really that relevant to kids' lives. Hence, me never really seeing much interest from kids. So. An alternative question could be something about, for example, TikToks. Um, we could say, hey, the following students made TikTok videos. I don't know if, oh, I did spell that right. With the listed amount of total likes. So you could have Julian and you could do this, but you could do um, a survey in the class and see who makes TikToks or who does, maybe it's Snapchat or whatever. Um, maybe Julian had four TikTok videos with a total of 412 likes. Juan had two TikTok videos with a total of 250 likes. Araya made one TikTok video with a total of 215 likes. Here we have math all over the place. We can have students calculating averages. What is the average per video? We can say, ask who has the highest average of the three people. We can get into some higher level things like does the highest average mean that that person actually had the most likes on one video. And if we, again, put this kind of thing into math, it's relevant to kids' lives and they're gonna care more and they're gonna be engaged more. We could even have kids go out and make something. That could be something that's done ahead of time in an assignment. Um, I have thought about the fact that obviously not everybody has phones, not everyone has TikTok. Um, and maybe some people aren't allowed to have TikTok, but the whole idea of this is just to go, is, is a perspective of the world is always changing. Maybe it's time we try to, I'm talking well myself as a teacher, try to change with, with the world and with kids interests and include in some degree, some of these things that are so incredibly popular with the youth, especially kids in you know, middle school. So, and there's so much math with that's right here in front of us. Uh, let's see here. Here's another, uh, here's a simple ratio problem. <clears throat> and this is no hard, this is not me being hard on band. Band and music is amazing, right? And I know we have a, I know we have a music teacher here. You're amazing and I love your videos, by the way. This is not a, a dig at you. But like, like we have a problem. There's 45 boys and 48 girls in choir. What's the ratio of girls to total choir members? I don't really care. And I don't think the kids really care, right? Like that, that question is just, I mean, I guess you could sit and count, right? If you want to, but I mean, there's no, there's nothing that speaks interest to me or relevance. I'm sure that, and again, whether it's band or whether it's math class, like nobody really I, there's no interest in that in that problem. And I think people are like, why am I doing this? And I have some a couple of really outspoken kids too in my classes that are like, why, why, why am I talking about this? I don't care. I'm not going to do this. I like, guess pretty fair, I think. So this is a problem that's been in our unit assessment for a long time. And I think it needs to be updated. So here's a possible alternative. Of students with phones, That's, this is an example. 18 students have an iPhone, 8 have an Android, and 6 have something totally different, right? Now, I was thinking about this problem. Some kids might not have phones, and that can be embarrassing for sure, right? So what, we, what I would do if I'm going to incorporate some of this stuff is I would have kids fill out a piece of paper, no name, no whatever, and just tell me what phone they have, if they have a phone. That way we, we won't identify kids who 
have phones and don't have phones. And I could do this collectively from all my classes, right? But get an actual, get some actual data that's real. Kids love their phones and care about them. Find out how many of them have iPhones, how many have Androids, how many have something that's maybe totally different, right? And we have ratios all over the place. We could ask, what is the ratio of iPhones to Androids? What is the ratio of totally different phones to all phones? And what is the ratio of Androids to phones? We can word it any way we want to. Why do you think the majority of phones are iPhones? But the point being is like, these are things they care about. And then they're going to want to also talk about it. And then maybe when they go home, they think more about it too. Right. But, um, and you know, people who are, people who have their Androids or iPhones are usually pretty opinionated. So that could bring up some interesting conversations. So that's my whole point to this is, um, can we make assessments, make the material in it relevant uh, to our kids' lives? We have such a wide diversity of kids, but really, I mean, some of the interests really do encompass a lot of them, right? Kids are still kids, and this happens to be the things that they are. a lot of them are interested in. I'm just kind of taking the view of technology is such a big, it's pretty much revolutionary with the phones. Um Kids love phones, the apps, like the apps and phones, right, and video games. I mean, there's still obviously things with sports and other interests, and I think we could go about this with, you know, surveying our kids in general. But um, I just think some of these really, really hot things like like the TikTok and like the apps and the technology, that's really a buzz that's going on. And I think if we incorporate that stuff um, into our assessments now, we would get a lot more engagement from our students and we would have kids really engaged in math so my whole point is let's connect the dots of what's relevant to kids and what we do in school um yeah i think that we would just get so much more participation and you know looking back at the video game stuff where kids actually spend money like that's real stuff and that's something they're going to care about right and so then Moving forward with other things, they're going to go, oh, well, what's the best deal? Right? They're not going to care about the best, the sweetest lemonade necessarily. They're not going to care which pop at the store necessarily is the best unit rate. But if it's video games and money involving things that they do, then I think they're going to care. And if we get the relevant material to their lives and lessons, we will get much more engagement. So thank you very, very much for watching. And let me know if you have any questions.